Hi guys! Happy Sunday with Satan! Alright, so, um, Jen and Sylvia, you got your Twitter back. That is amazing. You did nothing wrong. Nothing wrong at all. So they should have given you your Twitter back the day that you guys appealed it. So, I'm just really glad that you guys got it back. So, congratulations. And thank you guys for sharing and helping me and all of that. It's really amazing. So, alright. Okay, we are going to go on to part four from yesterday, continuation on Modern Magic by Donald Michael Craig. So, that's where you guys can get this book. Donald Michael Craig, Modern Magic. And if you're lucky, you have the cassette that came with it. Uh, yeah, I said cassette. So, that ages me just a little. Alright, part four. How, how are you guys doing with your um, mastering of the elements? Fire? Did you guys do the fire at all? Try it. Are you guys doing that at all? It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool, too. <sighs> Alright. So, alright, remember that magic is both an art and a science. So, in this part, we're going to be studying the basic preparation for all gray magic rituals. So, in a sense, this is the equivalent of a scientist prepared preparing to perform an experiment. So, as you will see, it employs aspects of the Supreme Pentagram ritual learned in the last lesson, which I did find that video and that's still there. All the videos are there. They're just not in order. They're not in playlists. So let me repeat, what you are learning here will be used in all of Grey Magic rituals, which are to follow. So, first, however, you need to make five items. So. For this, get four pieces of poster board, at least eight and a half by eleven inches. So a bigger size would be better. The dollar store, perfect, perfect. Literally, just, I mean, perfect. <laughs> so, all right, paint one bright green, another bright orange, another bright purple, and the last a bright silver. Ooh. So. Alright, now, once these have dried, paint a large, bright red triangle on the green board, and on a bright blue triangle on the orange board. On the purple board, paint a bright yellow triangle with a line across, across it, parallel to the baseline of the triangle. Now you're going to paint a, a similar figure on the silver board with flat, not glossy. Use a matte. Flat. No, it's matte. Use a matte finish. Um, fingernail polish. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so matte black paint. So, alright, so these are going to be your four elemental tables. So, alright, here is a demonstration. A little diagram of the four elemental tables that you guys can do. So you guys could screenshot that if you wanted. You can pause the video. You can do whatever you want. If you have the book then you'll have this. Alright, so, those are the four. Now, once they are dry, uh, they should be framed and hung in your temple. So, the one with the red fire triangle should be in the south, obviously, so south. The one with the blue water triangle should be in the west, which is this way for me. The one with the yellow air symbol should be in the east, which is that way for me. So, the card with the black earth symbol should be in the north, that way for me, unless otherwise noted have these on the walls in all future rituals, including your daily rituals. So all of everything we've learned up to here, these are going to be incorporated on each of your walls for the four elements. So uh, the last of the five items you will need to make is the Tablet of Union. So this is fun. All right, so this comes from a magical system known as Enochian. Uh, this is, the system was discovered by Dr. John Dee. He was an astrologer to Queen Elizabeth I, obviously, we all know that. And his um, assistant, the mysterious, ruggish Edward Kelly. Kelly, who always wore a hat pulled over his head to hide the fact that his ears had been cut off in punishment for a crime, ooh, functioned as Dee's seer in a series of magical experience in 1581. That's a long time ago. So the result of those experiments is mu is the much talked about and little understood system known as Enochian. 
I like it. I love Enoch. I love Enochian magic. It's amazing. So this person, Donald Michael Craig, says, I do not claim to be anything close to an expert in this particular system, but I do know that certain rituals which incorporate Enochian symbolism and techniques are very powerful. Very true, too. It's very, very true. So there seems to be a magical quality to the very sounds of the mysterious words. And there is. It's just, it's... The, the words evoke that within us, and it's just amazing. So, the Tablet of Union represents the fact that you, your altar functions as a place where the four magical elements meet, come together, and are united. So, to make it, you simply get a heavy piece of paper or cardboard and make a rectangle four units tall by five units wide. I do not specif specify the size of the units because you need to make it to fit in the center of the altar. Uh, no, nothing is going to fit on my altar right now. It is so jam-packed, it's not even funny. Alright, so outline these spacings on the card. Oh, so the card is filled by 20 boxes. Five across, four up and down. So, this should be done with uh, I hope we can diagram. Yeah, we do. Thank God for diagrams. Thank you, Donald and Michael Craig, wherever you are. So, so it should be very dark um, with black ink. So the paper should be white. Fill in the card as below. Okay, you guys can screenshot that if you want. Hopefully, it shows up a little better. There we go. Maybe, maybe, maybe. So that is right there. That's our table that we'll be working with. That will go in the center of the altar, or the middle of the altar. So, alright. Now, the letters, the lines, should be as dark as possible. So, E-X-A-R-P is the Anachian or angelic name for the spirit of air. So, H-C-O-M-A is one for the spirit of water. Um, N-A-N-T, Nanta, is the spirit, uh, the name of the spirit of earth, which leaves Bitum or B-I-T-O-M, that's the name for spirit fire. So if you can, have the table of union laminated with a plastic coating or put it in a small frame. Huh, that's interesting. I've never, I think I've heard of it, I'm not sure. I probably have. So set up your altar with the tablet of union in the center so when you are behind the altar, west of the altar, facing east, you can read the tablet. So on each side of the tablet should be one of the elemental tools you have made. So to the east, place the air dagger. To the south, place the fire wand. To the west, place the water cup. To the north, place the earth pentagram. So there should be uh, water in the cup. You will also need another dagger, which, uh, dagger with, which to do the lesser punishing ritual with the pentagram. So, all right, candles to light. Um, the candles to light the area are also nice, along with some incense burning. Um, these items can be placed on the table <clears throat> on tables around your area or on the floor. So, just be careful when you place fire on the floor. Don't burn stuff down, please. Thank you. These items, oh yeah, blah blah blah. Prepare yourself, wait, be sure they will harm nothing, not to start a fire. Prepare yourself for this ritual as described for the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. And begin. So, this is the watchtower ritual. So, step one. If you have a bell, sound it ten times. Ten times thusly. So you're going to go three marks, so ding, 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 four marks, ding, 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 and then three more, ding, 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 ding. So each mark represents a striking of the bell, so that in this case you have a 3-4-3 three, three pattern. If you do not have a bell, sound the pattern by striking the top of the altar uh, with the end of the handle of the dagger. You are going to use for the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. Then, in a loud, imperious tone, you're going to say, Hecus, Hecus, Este, uh, Be, Oh God, I can't say that. Hecus, Hecus, Este, Beblo, Bebloi, Biel, Bibeloi, 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 Bibeloi. There we go, Bibeloi. So, this is pronounced, um, Hecus, Hecus. Um, S T B B Loi. So it is a traditional way of announcing that a ritual is about to begin, and those, uh, both physical and non-physical, um, not entitled to witness it should leave the area. So, 
Step two, sound the bell or knock once, then do the lesser punishing ritual of the pentagram. So step three, sound the bell or knock two times, then do the banishing ritual of the hexagram. So now we have the opening by watchtower. So this is step four. Sound the bell nine times. So you're going to do a sequence of three. So ding, 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 three, six, nine. So there we go. Um, step five, always walking clockwise. You're going to go to the south. Wait, that's my south. Um, go to the south of the altar, take the fire wand, and wave it three times. Uh, once each to the left. So one, two, three. Um, right, one, two, three. And then center uh, while facing the north and the elemental sigil there. So now hold the wand with the point up over your head. Slowly, um, you're going to walk once around the room in a clockwise direction, and you're going to say, um, And when, after all the phantoms have vanished, thou shalt see that holy and formless fire, that fire which darts and flashes through the hidden depths of the universe. Hear thou the voice of fire. That's how a jinn is described. So, by this time, you should be back at the south, facing in the direction. So trace a large circle clockwise in the air. Visualize it golden. In this circle, draw a bright blue invoking a pentagram of fire as described in the last lesson. So form the sign for Leo, uh, the fire cherub, cherub, in the center. Now point to the center with the wand and say, um, oip, tia, pedos. I, I totally butchered that. All right, which is pronounced. O e p e t a a p e d o k. Yeah, I butchered that. The words are the holy names for fire in Inachian. Now hold the wand up in the air and say, in the names and the letters of the great southern quadrum, what the quadrangle, I invoke ye, ye angels of the watchtower of the south. So, now spend a few moments visualizing and feeling the pure elemental fire energy. Um, fire-filled energy from this side of your circle and then replace the wand back on your altar. So. Alright, now step six. It's pretty interesting. Alright, so move to the west. And take the water cup from the altar, face the west, and sprinkle some of the water with your fingers to the left, to the right, middle of the elemental symbol, which is there. Hold the cup on high and circum circumambulate um, once in a clockwise direction, saying, So therefore, first, the priest who governeth the works of fire must sprinkle with the lustral water of the loud, resounding sea. Very wordy. Wordy. Is that even a name? I don't know. So, now that you are back facing west, use the cup to trace a large golden circle in the air, and inside it draw an electric blue invoking water pentagram. In the center of this, draw the eagle cherub. Point to the center, saying, um, M pe he ar sel ga o he ga e o. Then, holding the cup high in all the air, say, <laughs> In the name and letters of the great western quadrangle, I invoke ye, uh, ye angels of the watchtowers of the west. So, now spend a few moments visualizing and feeling the pure elemental watery energy from this this side of your magical circle. Now replace the cup on the altar. I feel blurry. I feel fuzzy. Maybe it's just my eyes. So, step seven. Walk clockwise to the west of the altar. Take up the air dagger and turn outward to where your elemental sigil is placed. Shake the dagger three times. Once to the left, right, and center of the elemental sign. Hold the dagger on high and walk around the altar once, saying, Such a fire existeth, extending through the rushing of air, or even a fire formless, uh, whence cometh the image of a voice, or even a flashing light, um, abounding, revolving, whirling forth, crying aloud. So, I really like these little, these, yeah, it's pretty cool. Alright, so by this time you should be back at the east. Facing east, use the dagger to trace a large golden circle. Inside the circle, draw a bright blue invoking pentagram of air. 
Now the invoking are like this, this way. Up, down, doot, doot, doot. That's the invoking one. Wait a minute, no, invoking is this way. Yes, because you're bringing up. So yes, that's the way. All right. Now that you're back facing east, okay, use the cup, um, golden circle in the air, and inside of it draw an electric blue invoking water pentagram. And then inside of that is the, you draw the um, eagle cherub, point to the center saying, um, Mpehe arsel ga e o. Then holding the cup high in the air, say, in the names uh, and letters of the Great Western Quadrangle, I invoke ye, ye angels of the watchtowers of the West. And the holy Anachian names ruling water are pronounced. Um, Mpehe ar sel ga e o. So that's the Anachian names. So now spend a few moments visualizing and feeling the pure elemental water energy from this side of your circle and replace the cup on the altar. Step seven, walk clockwise to the east of the altar, take up the air dagger and turn outward to where your elemental sigil is placed. Shake the dagger three times, once to the left, right, and center of the elemental sign. Hold the dagger um, on high and walk around the altar once, saying, did I just say all of this? I did do all this already. So such a fire existed extending through the rushing of air, or even a fire formless, whence cometh the image of a voice, or even a flashing light, abounding, revolving, whirling forth, crying aloud. Alright, so yeah, I already did say that. Sorry. So, by this time you should be back at the east. Facing east, use the dagger to trace a large golden circle. Inside the circle, draw a bright blue invoking pentagram of air. In the space in the center of the pentagram, draw the sign of Aquarius, representing the air cherub. So with um, the dagger pointing to the center, you are going to say, um, Oro, E, Ba, Ha, Ao, Zadbi. Okay, so now hold the dagger on high with its point up, and say, in the names and letters of the Great Eastern Quadrangle, I invoke ye, ye angels of the Watchtowers of the East. So. I like those. I like those Anachian words. They do give a really, like, just a sense of uh, power and mystery. I love it. So, now, yes, spend a few moments appreciating the power of pure elemental air coming from this direction um, and return the dagger to its place. Now, step eight is taking a drink of your coffee. Okay, now, step eight, walk, clo blah, blah, blah. walk clockwise, clockwise to the north of the altar, take the pentagram, and facing north, shake the pentagram three times, once to the left, once to the right, center, toward the earth symbol outside of the magical circle. Remember, remember to hold it by the black section, and we went over that in um, a video, we went over that in one of our other videos with the construction of the pentagram. Alright, so, now hold the pentagram on high and say as you circumambulate once, which is going around clockwise around your, your altar, your circle. Okay. A stoop, not down into that darkly splendid world wherein continually lieth a faithless depth in Hades wrapped in gloom, delighting in unintelligent images unintelligible images, perceptuous winding, a black ever rolling abyss, ever espousing a body, unluminous, formless and void. Ooh, that's pretty dark. I like that. Alright, um, on returning to the north, use the pentagram to make a golden circle as before. Only place inside it a bright blue invoking pentagram of earth. So inside of that, um, place the image of the Earth Cherub, which is the astrological sign of Taurus. Hmm. That's different. So point to the center with the pentagram and say, um, wow. E more D al hec tega. Alright, again, hold the pentagram on high and say, in the names and letters of the great northern quadrangle, 
I invoke ye angels of the watchtowers of the north. So, now you're going to spend a few moments um, sensing the great earthly power which comes from this direction. So you're going to replace the pentagram and move in a clockwise direction to the west, this way, and face east, or west and face east. So you're going to have your back to the west, and then you're going to be facing east from behind the altar. Now step nine. Over the altar and the tablet of union, make the sign known as the rendering of the veal veil. This is done by making the sign of the enterer. Um, left foot forward as hands thrust out. So do it with your palms together, so it'd be like this. Like that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Alright, where'd I go? Where did I go, guys? Hmm, oh, okay. But do it with the palms together, then separate your hands as if you were parting. Okay, so, if you were, as if you were parting, um, a curtain, so, and then say, oh, I can't pronounce any of this, okay, so, uh, yeah, this means, um, I reign over you, says the god of justice, three magical names who rule over the tablet of union, move, therefore, move and appear, open the mysteries of creation, balance, righteousness, and truth. So, you pronounce it in this manner, in the Anachian way. Alright, so, let's see, here we go. O el so, nuf veo er, sa, ji, go, ho, i a da val ta. Um, el ex ar pehe, coma na, nu, tabito em. Zad a ka ra e ka zad a ka re o da zad a me amer anu o do ki kle ka ach pi a e pe pi a mo el o da ve o a nu the bold faced words of the power should be vibrated in the usual manner. So, L, um, L, X, R, P, H, Komana, Nu, Tabi, To, M, should be vibrated. Um, just like you do with the, the Kabbalistic cross, like the Atta, Melkut, vibrated. Alright, now, step 10. Now say, I invoke ye angels of the celestial spheres, whose dwellings, dwelling is in the invisible. Uh, ye are the guardians of the gates of the universe. Um, be ye also the guardians of this mystic sphere. Keep far removed the evil and the unbalanced. Strengthen and inspire me so that I may preserve unsullied, I like that word, this abode of the mysteries of the eternal gods. Let my sphere be pure and holy so that I may enter in and become a partaker of the secrets of the light of the divine light divine i like that that's pretty uh pretty interesting now spend a few moments trying to sense and balance the four magical elements here at the center of your circle so now step 11. Uh, now move to the northeast corner facing outward and say the visible sun is the dispenser of light to the earth let me therefore form a vortex in this chamber that the invisible sun of the spirit may shine therein from above. Ooh, I like that even better too. Now step 12. Circum, um, now circumambulate three times around your circle. Each time you pass the east, make the sign of the enterer in the direction you are going. So that is, you don't point to the east to give the sign. You do it straight ahead of you. As you move around, visualize and feel the building up of a powerful vortex of energy. Some people do like to do this quickly. Others like to form the circles of uh, these circles of power slowly, which is up to you guys what you guys want to do with that. I am a little blurry. There we go. Now I'm not. Oh, much better. All right. So now, now try both and see which is you know the most effective for you. So after you have made the third pass of the east, go to the west of the altar and face east. 
So, now here's step 13. Give the sign of the enterer. And that is this. Well, yeah. Like this. Only your hand should be like this. <coughs> kind of like a hockey or a uh, football goal. Whatever. The giant whatever the goal. Who knows what that fucking thing is. I don't know. I don't care. Alright. Now give the sign of the enterer and say, Holy out there, art, art thou, Lord of the universe. Now give the sign of the enterer again and say, Holy art thou, whom nature hath not formed. Give the sign of the enterer once again and say, Holy art thou, the vast and mighty one, Lord of light and of darkness. So, now give the sign of silence, which is Crowley. So, um, hmm, where'd I go? Stamp left foot as you bring your left forefinger, oh, to the lips as if telling one, someone to hush. See, here, there we go. So, step 14, do your gray magic. <laughs> so, um, remember to do divination. Step 15, when you have finished your magical work, say, unto thee, soul wise soul eternal and soul merciful one be the praise and glory forever who has permitted me who now standeth humbly before thee to enter this far into the sanctuary of the mysteries not unto me but unto thy name be the glory let the influence of thy divine ones descend upon my head and teach me the value of self-sacrifice so that i shrink not in the hour of trial but that thus my name may be written on high, and my genius stand in the presence of the Holy Ones. So very interesting, very interesting stuff. It's yes, it sounds a little biblical, but it is drawing from you know different traditions. So now the closing by Watchtower. This is closing it all down. So step sixteen. <laughs> now circumambulate three times counterclockwise giving the sign of the enterer in the direction that you are going as you pass the east. As you do this, reserve, uh, reverse the circumambulation. Feel the energy you have gathered dissipate. Step 17, do the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram. Step 18, do the banishing ritual of the hexagram. Very, um, yes, very interesting. All right, now. Step 19. Say, I now release any spirits that may have been imprisoned by this ceremony. Depart in peace to your abodes and habitations, and go with the blessings of Yehashu Ah Yeho Vasha. Vibrate the above two names. So, you have to vibrate. Now, uh, step 20. Ring the bell or knock 10 times. So we're going to do um, one, two, three, and then you're going to do another one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three. So, uh, three, four, three. And then you're going to say, I now declare this temple duly closed. Knock. Do not ring the bell once. The ritual is over. Completely over. No more. There's no more in this book. It's all gone. No, I'm joking. There's more. There's more, so we will get to that here in just a second. Just a second. This stuff is really good to have um, all this back. I'm so grateful for YouTube and for everybody that had petitioned YouTube. You never realize what something means to you until it's gone very true too so you don't I never realized how much I mean I knew how much this all this you know the witch pop community meant to me I didn't realize just how important and how much of a place in my heart uh, it, it is so all right now before you uh, tear these pages into little bits and decide to abandon magic forever because it is so complicated <laughs> I love his sense of humor I love it and I love it, it's just a blunt. Praise Satan. It is Sunday with Satan. 
I am making these and selling them. So, all right. Um, stop for just a second and notice that this time I have not included a summary. So this is because for this ritual, you should make up your own summaries. Instead of using a regular size paper, um, my, Donald Michael Craig says I used 4x4, four 4x5 four, four index cards. Perfect. I love that. So I was able to fit the entire ritual on both sides of three cards. It looks much longer than it really is because of all the added instructions. Uh, he says, I have given you here. In practice, it takes a little more than ten minutes. If the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram and the, the Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram are memorized. Um, I still have got to memorize the um, Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram, but the, the LBRP, I have it down. So, when you are making up your summaries on cards, be sure to go over how the Invoking Pentagrams are made. Those are very important. How they are traced, how they are formed. So thus, or this, was described in the last lesson, the Watchtower Ritual. It's a potent preparation for any magical ritual. So I really, really, really like that. I love that. The whole idea of it. So, some of you may be familiar with the version published by Israel Regardi in his book, Ceremonial Magic. So, um, he says, I must warn you, however, that that book is filled with many errors. This can be verified by checking what is printed in the book against both Ricardi's The Golden Dawn and Laycock's Complete Enochian Dictionary, for those of you looking for a good in introduction to the Golden Dawn version of Enochian magic. Um, he suggests Gerald Schuler's book Enochian magic. As long as you stay with the Anache material as presented in this course, you will be able to use it safely and effectively. So the material as presented here has been tested and practiced for almost 100 years. How amazing is that? That's older than Wicca. Huh. If you investigate this form of magic further, I urge extreme caution, he says. Some people claim that the reason Aleister Crowley was unsuccessful in his lifetime because he was because of errors he may have made when doing the Anachian calls form of this magical system. In any event, the main thrust of this course is toward the Kabbalah, 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 and not Anachiana. So, it can, I've heard it can be dangerous, so do it at your own risk. As he says, at this point in your studies, it would be a good idea to practice this ritual at least once a week. So, notice that I said practice this ritual, not perform it. Separate it into sections and go over each section several times until you are very familiar with it. So, it would be best if you could memorize this ritual as it will be a major focus of all the practical or gray magic work which is to follow. So, pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Right, at this point, however, it is not necessary to perform it and work with it over and over as you should have been doing with the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, the Banishing Ritual of the Hexagram, the Middle Pillar, the Circulation of the Body of Light, and the Tarot Contemplation Ritual. This is because two other things are needed. So, pretty interesting. Tarot Contemplation, that, has, that is why I can read tarot cards that well, this well now. I am surprised. All right now, first, the instruments or tools needed need the appropriate preparation. In a sense, they need to be initiated or dedicated to a magical service. Second, a final ultimate magical tool is needed. This ultimate tool must have some sort of um, universal universal universality, whatever in its nature, so that it can be virtually be used for any purpose as opposed to the elemental tools, which represent certain singular qualities. So, um, it is with this ultimate tool that the four elements, elemental weapons, will be energized, charged, and consecrated to their sacred magical tasks. More on this tool in a moment. Right after this commercial break. I'm joking. Alright, so, where did I go? There we go. Meanwhile, it would be a good idea to spend some time thinking about how the Watchtower Ritual could be done with a group. 
uh, the exact division of parts must be determined by the number of people who will be working with you. If you have at least four people in your group, each person can represent one of the elements throughout the ceremony. If there are five people, four can represent the elements, and the fifth can do the other sections of the ritual, which are not totally related to one of the elements. So. Um, that one person should sit in the east when not actively involved in the ceremony. This person can be the leader of the group, or at least during the ceremony, and should not take part in the circum circumambulations. This person represents spiritual wisdom and light. Light rises like the sun from the east, so this person representing light sits while the others circumambulate. So as they pass, they salute with the sign of the enterer. Um, in the direction that they are going, not to the person. So, the respect is towards the philosophy and the sacred, secret science of light, not to a person. So, that does make a lot of sense. It does make a lot of sense. Alright, so, I think we will go on to part five tomorrow. Let's see where that takes us. Tomorrow, we will be going over the rainbow wand. I think it's pretty cool. Really cool, actually. So we have actually gone over quite a bit in this little section. So, all right, this is lesson six, part four of Modern Magic by Donald Michael Craig, page 250. So. Ooh. smoke in the eye. So, alright guys, I hope you guys enjoy. I, I have a question for everybody that watches. Alright, so, I was gifted this. <clears throat> Saged it, cleansed it, all that good stuff. How would you use this? It's obviously been made. This is obviously for scrying. But then on the back is the Tetragrammatron. So, what is it, is it supposed to face this way? So the flat lays, or should it be this way? How do you use this? That is my main question. How? It is the best gift I've ever gotten. Well, one of them. So, but I do, I love this. I, I've kept it very well, and thank you for sending it to me. So, alright guys. I love you guys so much, and happy Sunday with Hayden, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Yes. So, alright guys, I love you all with all of my heart, all the way from Venus, all the way back down, and everybody have a great Sunday with Hayden, and try to stay cool, it's really, really, really hot, so, alright guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.